This is Gyro Gear Loose with RV Hacking on the Cheap. Today we're going to discuss how to test an RV receptacle like you would find at a campground to determine whether it is safe to plug your RV into it or whether it presents a dangerous shock hazard to you and your family. Let's say this is your RV. I gave you a green welcome mat to represent that big mud puddle outside your door as well as electrical ground. Because the tires insulate the trailer from the ground, when we plug in, the presence of AC begins to build up a capacitive charge on all the metal surfaces of the trailer. To prevent this, the chassis is connected to the ground prong of your plug, safely draining away any static charge that would have built up. Let's say the campground electrician accidentally reversed neutral and hot and can't figure out why the breaker keeps blowing. He discovers by not connecting the ground, or maybe there was no ground wire provided, the power will stay on now. All of the appliances seem to work and everything looks fine, except that campers occasionally get little shocks in and around their camper, and invisibly their GFCI has stopped working. When enough people complain about being shocked, or a smart camper actually tests the outlet and finds it's wired really wrong, the electrician goes back and figures out that the problem is that floating ground. He finds that if he connects the ground to the common electrode, his pocket tester says the circuit is now perfect except that he's created a hidden and extremely lethal electrocution hazard. The welcome mat is still a real ground, and now the handle of the trailer is carrying 120 volts. When the camper tries to open the door, 120 volts flows through their body, potentially killing them. I mentioned our dangerous electrician was using a tester much like this one. And this type of tester is very popular among campers as well, trying to protect from the above conditions. However, neither understands its limitations. If you were to smash one open, you would find that what you see is what you get. It is literally a triangle of light bulbs between the pairs of prongs, and only indicates where there is power and where there is not. Never underestimate a determined idiot. With enough mistakes, the most dangerous condition matches the, the ideal condition. Here are two correctly wired receptacles. Note that ground and neutral are their own discrete wires. Many people falsely believe they are the same connector, and it is an important safety feature to not have them bonded together other than that the main utility breaker box. If we label the voltages, you'll see that there is power between hot and ground, and between hot and neutral, but not between ground and neutral. This is because of them being joined together at the utility box. Again, they should not be joined together at the receptacle box. The same is true of the 50 amp circuit, except that there are two hot connectors. Again, hot ground and hot neutral is 120 volts on each side, but because the two hot leads are in opposite phase, between them is 240. Once again, between ground and neutral will read 0 volts. If I diagram the most common bad wiring schemes, you can see what the three light tester is actually doing. In the upper left, power again forms an L. However, if the hot wire is connected to ground or common, and is out of position, the two powered legs have rotated and a red light comes on indicating that there should not be power between the common and ground. As long as all three wires are connected, you have two lights, but one will be red. If one of the wires is not connected, there would only be power on one of the pairings. Therefore, you only will see one light. If the missing wire is the hot lead, there is no power into the, that receptacle, and that's why both yellow lights are out. Neither side of the L has power. On the far right is the most dangerous case, where hot and common have been connected, but have been connected twice. Because they're connected twice, and because what would normally have been ground common is connected to one another, your tester indicates that everything is perfect, because that's normally what would be correct, except that the reverse polarity has occurred. Therefore, the skin of your RV and the power pedestal's enclosure are now energized with the hot lead, making it 120 volts. The literal ground really is electrical ground as well, so when you touch the enclosure or your RV, you become part of a 120 volt circuit to bring hot back to ground. This is usually painful and sometimes lethal. With all this information on how a receptacle should test, I'll demonstrate testing an unknown receptacle using my own home receptacle and confirm that it is wired correctly. The first thing I always do is to check whether the housing has a reversed hot and ground. I simply go near the housing with a non-contact voltage detector. And as you can see, there is no reading. If you approach the box and you get this, that would indicate that the box is in fact wired to hot. Immediately back away from the pedestal and demand a new site. Do not touch the box. This could be a fatal shock hazard to you or anyone else who touches the box while standing on the ground as you become the live circuit. Now that we've confirmed it's safe to touch the receptacle box at all, 
You can check the, for the correct configuration of wiring using a three light tester, a multimeter, or a direct contact tester. My non-contact tester has a direct contact mode and does not require batteries to operate that mode, which is sometimes a benefit. Using direct contact mode involves touching each terminal with an exposed metal probe. Be sure to keep your fingers away from the probe if you're going to use this. The ground should not show any voltage. It doesn't. The neutral should not show any voltage. And it doesn't. The hot should show voltage. As you can see, the power light comes on when I hit that contact. Again, if you are detecting voltage on the ground or the common, do not plug into this outlet. If you prefer to use a voltmeter, you would check for a voltage between ground and hot, should be 120. Ground and neutral should be close to zero. Occasionally there's a little stray voltage. And of course, between hot and neutral, you should have 120 volts again. If it had read 240, you should not plug in. This socket should only be carrying 120 volts. I picked up this cheap Chinese meter for a few dollars. It has a voltmeter built in. If you can see the display, it reads 110 volts. I've mentioned several different testers, and you're probably wondering which ones I recommend. Well, they all serve different purposes. The three light tester is fast, cheap, and doesn't take batteries, and does a decent job most of the time. The problem is, when it's wrong, it's really wrong. The non-contact voltage tester is excellent for detecting a hot skin condition, but that's all it does. The nice fluke ones cost $30, a cheap one can be $10. And again, they take batteries, which are always dead. And finally, they have no ability to identify which wire is which. They're only testing for whether there's a hot skin. A traditional multimeter takes batteries, which are always dead, but does spit out a very precise voltage. It's the only one that spits out a precise voltage. With, with a little expertise, it completely replaces the three light tester, as long as you know what you're testing. However, it also has the same failing as the three light tester in the case of a bootleg ground. Finally, a direct contact tester does not take batteries, and with a little expertise can again be used to identify which wire is which. The one I have displays a simple voltage. However, most only give you an idiot light that is on or off for whether there's voltage on that terminal. Again, with a little expertise, it can be used to detect hot skin by probing the enclosure or the RV chassis itself. This has been Gyro Gearloose with RV Hacking on the Cheap, and I hope I've made you a little safer. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.